We like eating, right? Food is an important part of Stardew Valley, it can refill energy, give exclusive buffs, and be used for profit. Although it's not always clear which of these recipes are worth making and how to obtain them. So we're going to go over all of that. But first, what is a cooked dish? A cooked dish has four important qualities. Health recovered, energy recovered, sale price, and most importantly, what buffs it provides. Within these buffs, there's three different kinds. Skill buffs, which give a temporary level boost to your skills. Combat buffs, which increase one of your various combat stats, such as attack or defense. And unique buffs, which provide unconventional effects that are usually unique to just one cooked dish. To cook any of these food items, you're going to have to upgrade your house at Robin's, for the price of 10,000 gold and 450 wood, to unlock your kitchen. Alternatively, you could get to level 9 foraging and craft a cookout kit. Where can you obtain these cooked recipes? Well, there's one that you obtain when you have your kitchen built, the fried egg. Beyond that, there's four different sources for your recipes. Buying them from shops, unlocking them through your skill level ups, and from the Queen of the Sauce channel on your TV. Queen of the Sauce airs every Sunday and it'll give you a unique cooking recipe every single week for the first two years. Which, yes, since making all of the cooked recipes is required for perfection, means the earliest possible perfection date is winter 28th of year 2. Two. If you miss any episodes, on Wednesdays they'll be running reruns, which prioritizes showing you recipes that you haven't gotten yet. As for the recipes unlocked by level up, you'll get them at farming, fishing, mining, and combat level 3s and foraging level 2, and one more at fishing level 9 and combat level 9. All of these give buffs to their respective skills, so they're all pretty useful unlocks. For the recipes unlocked with friendship, these will be mailed to you the morning after you reach that friendship threshold. You get a recipe at both 3 and 7 hearts with every character that isn't a marriage candidate, excluding the kids, Krobus, and the dwarf. This also applies to Emily and Shane as they weren't actually marriage candidates when the game released. There's just a few other exceptions to this rule. Sandy only gives a recipe at level 7, Evelyn gives a recipe in her 4 heart cutscene instead of 3 hearts, and Willy gives 2 extra recipes at 5 and 9 hearts. And now for the final way to earn recipes, buying them from shops. As you could expect, most of them are bought from Gus at the saloon. There are 9 recipes that can be bought here, and interestingly, many of the recipes are also obtained elsewhere. In fact, the only recipe that's unique to the saloon is the triple shot espresso. So if you're trying to save a quick buck, all of the others can be obtained on Queen of the Sauce episodes and Evelyn's Fort Heart cutscene. Someone has been stealing recipes. As for the other recipes, there's only a few, and they're all exclusive to Ginger Island. The first can be bought from the dwarf at floor 5 of the Volcano Dungeon. Note that you will need the Dwarvish Translation Guide obtained from donating the four dwarf scrolls to the museum, and it costs a thousand gold. Banana Pudding can be bought from the Island Trader, after you unlock it on the island, for 30 bone fragments, which can easily be found just up north near the river. For the last one, you're going to need the island resort unlocked, and after you do that, there's a chance every day that Gus could come and visit, as long as it's not rainy. When he does, he opens a little shop here in the shack, where he'll sell you the tropical curry recipe. As a side note, this is the only place that you can buy the pina colada, which is the only alcoholic drink in the game that doesn't give you the tipsy debuff. It is unremarkable in every other way. As for the good buffs, the situations that you can use them in are vast. Some are consistently useful, and some buffs are for niche situations. To try and make this as simple as I can, I've made a tier list. Buffs near the top are almost always good to have in any situation, while the ones at the bottom might only have one or two uses. First of all, speed is king. It is always useful with very few exceptions, like standing all day while fishing. Next up is luck, also in its own tier. While not quite as universal as speed, it usually has a different effect depending on the circumstances. While fishing, it increases the chance of getting a treasure chest. When panning, it increases the chance of getting iridium ore or luck rings. You'll get better items whenever you tech trash cans. It increases the amount of wood obtained when cutting down a tree. You'll get more lightning during a thunderstorm. And probably best of all, you'll have a higher chance of finding staircases when you're mining. 
For the next tier, we have all of the skill buffs, although personally I would put fishing at the top of this tier, and mining at the bottom. In general, these all have the effects you would normally get from having a higher level in that skill, with the exceptions of unlocking crafting items and professions at level 5 and 10. The universal effect with all of these is that you'll lose less energy when using the tools associated with that skill. Going buff by buff... I consider fishing the most helpful because not only does it raise the quality of the fish you catch, but it also makes your fishing bar larger, making the act of fishing itself a lot easier. A buff is pretty much a necessity if you plan on going after some of the harder fish like scorpion carps or the legend. Farming is great simply because you'll make a lot more money getting higher quality crops whenever you pick them. Just pop a good farming buff whenever it's time to harvest, and you're good. Foraging is nice because alongside getting higher quality forged materials on the ground, for every multiple of four levels you'll get an extra berry from bushes on salmonberry and blackberry season. And this does mean that you'll get four instead of three if you're at level 12 or higher. And for mining you'll find more ore nodes and gem nodes while you're mining. Next I've piled in all of the combat stats. Honestly, none of them are that important. Combat is never required while mining. Of these, I'd probably prioritize defense since it can be useful when you have a low combat level with low HP just to survive, but of course that can be countered with just eating regular food for healing. I also have the Squid Ink Ravioli buff here. This prevents you from sustaining any debuffs from enemies during combat. Debuffs are never too big of a deal and not very common, with the exception of the very late game Nausea debuff, which prevents you from eating. That does have an easier counter of just eating ginger though, so ultimately not even very useful there. It's generally not worth making Squid Ink Ravioli for the buff. And at the bottom of the pyramid, we have Max Energy and Magnetism debuffs. Thing is, both of these are actually pretty nice in theory. Increasing your energy by collecting the star drops in the game is pretty important, and the magnet ring is one of the more useful rings in the entire game. But when looking at food specifically, once again I say, why not just eat normal food when you need to replenish your energy instead of increasing the max? And oh, I sure wish I had a magnetism buff so I could pick up that item. Hmm. There you have it, those are the buffs that I believe you should be prioritizing. You may be asking, can you stack these buffs from multiple foods? That's gonna be a no. However, you can stack the buff from one food and one drink item. There's only three drinks that provide a buff. Green tea provides a max energy buff, which as we discussed before is pointless. Coffee, and by extension triple shot espresso, provide a speed buff, and ginger ale, which is a very late game 1.5 exclusive drink, provides a luck buff. As you can probably guess, the fact that these drinks will combine with any food buff you want in the entire game makes them really powerful. So now that you know how to get the cooked items and you know what buffs are good, what cooked items are worth making. First of all, there's three recipes that will straight up make you money if you make them compared to their ingredients. That is pale broth and algae soup, both of which made from white algae and normal algae respectively. And then we have sashimi, which is a much more interesting result. This is the cooked item that you get from reaching three hearts with Linus. And it's special because its ingredients are simply any single fish. There are many fish that cost a lot less than 75 gold. One of the best examples of its usefulness is if you have a crab pot in fresh water, no matter what you catch, it will always sell better as sashimi. It's definitely one of the cooked recipes you'll want to prioritize getting if you need to make a quick buck. As for good buffing food, we have the aforementioned coffee and ginger ale at the top of the list, although coffee is technically an artisan item. Sam. Oh, they walk straight through it. Oh, that's so nice. Although coffee is technically an artisan item, triple espresso is a cooked item. It takes three coffees and lasts for triple the duration of a coffee, so you can use whichever you like. Personally, I'm a big fan of the farmer's lunch. It's unlocked at level three farming and takes a parsnip and an omelet to make. So one parsnip, one egg, one milk. 
It's a potentially very cheap item depending on the ingredients you use, but it gives a massive plus three buff to farming. If you harvest enough crops during that buff, you'll easily make the money back that it took to cook. Pumpkin soup is one of my favorite items for starting up the Skull Cavern. Not only does it give a great plus two luck, but also a plus two defense as well. And that's a part of the game where you could really use the extra defense. And it's usually my precursor to spicy eels, which while only giving plus one luck, also give plus one speed. They're pretty complicated to cook, but they're a common drop from royal serpents in the Skull Cavern. So I start using them once I've gathered enough just from my Skull Cavern runs. Seafoam pudding is a big one for fishers. It's unlocked at level 9 fishing. You'll definitely have to go out of your way to get to the ingredients, a flounder, a midnight carp, and squid ink, but it gives you a massive plus 4 fishing buff, which is perfect for finishing off those difficult legendary fish. If that's a bit of a chore for you, lobster bisque can be a hard to unlock, but easy to make alternative. You'll either need to wait until winter 14th of year 2 on Queen of the Sauce, or get 9 hearts with Willy. It only takes a lobster and milk, too easy to get items at any time of the year, and gives plus 3 fishing. And if that's still a bit much, my third choice for fishing buff is Trout Soup, which can be bought at any time from Willy's shop for 250 gold, giving you a tidy plus 1 fishing. If it's berry picking season, pancakes are incredibly easy to make with just an egg and wheat, and give you a plus 2 foraging buff and you just need to buy the recipe for 100 gold at the saloon. If you're looking to recover energy or health, buying salads at the saloon only costs 220 gold and recovers 113 energy and 50 health. That is the best bang for your buck you'll get from buying food. So I'm going to go ahead and say this now. If you want to cook food for healing or energy restoration, pretty much just make whatever you happen to have the ingredients for. If you happen to have a lot of melons, blueberries, and apricots specifically for some reason, you can cook a fruit salad, which is one of the best restoring items in the game. On the other hand, you could just sell those items and buy just as much restorations worth of salads as you would get from the fruit salad. This is the case for pretty much every cooked dish. Salads are almost always superior, easier to carry, and simpler to obtain. To finish this off, I want to talk about a couple of foods that aren't cooked recipes, but they can be eaten and are notable. Field snacks are a great source of early game energy. They cost each tree seed, an acorn, a pine cone, and a maple seed to craft, and they give you a quick quick 45 energy. Life elixirs can be crafted from one of each unique kind of mushroom, which is easy to get if you have the mushroom cave on your farm, and despite it saying that it only heals 90 health, it'll heal whatever amount of health you have. It always heals completely to full. The oil of garlic unlocked at level 6 combat and crafted from 10 garlics and 1 oil gives you the unique oil of garlic buff. It's not immediately obvious what this does. When you're in the mines, it will make no enemies appear whatsoever. None. When you're in the Skull Cavern, enemies will still spawn, but you'll never get an infested floor. This includes prehistoric floors, as those are essentially infested. Two pretty neat effects, and it lasts a whopping 10 minutes. That's almost the entire day. I don't think I could make it through without mentioning the magic rock candy. There are many ways to obtain this item. It's a one-time gift for donating 90 items to the museum. It's a 0.12% drop from Haunted Skulls. Or you can trade three prismatic shards for one at the Desert Trader on Thursdays only. So what's all the hoopla about? It gives plus two mining, plus five luck, plus five attack, plus five defense, and plus one speed. And that buff will last a little longer than eight minutes. Having one of these alone can turn a 50 floor run in the Skull Cavern into a 100 floor run. You'll be getting so many staircases, so many gem nodes, and demolishing every enemy in your way. Or you can make the sprinkle shirt. I have one final tip. Maybe you clicked on this video because you have one cooked item left and you don't know how to get the recipe for it. If that's the case, let me link you to a certain page of the Wikipedia. This page has an image of all of the cooked items in the game in the same order that you can look at them on your collections page. Simply click on the item you're missing, and on the little description box on the right, you can see how you get the recipe. I'll put that link in the description. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this will help you out in your cooking endeavors. Let me know if there's any foods I didn't mention that have been a big help to you, and I'll see you in the next one.